Hello and welcome to the Schedule channel and today let's find out what the best $300 graphics card is. On my left I have the RTX 3050 which has an MSRP of $250 but currently retails for about $300 to $335. And then on my right I have its competition that being the Radeon RX 6600 XT which has an MSRP of $380 but currently retails for about $300 to $340. And then for my international viewers, I've also included the RX 6600, which has an MSRP of 320, but at least here in the States, retails for about 250 to 280. All three of these graphics cards are going to be great for 1080p gaming, but one of them is very much the one to choose out of the three, and that's what we'll be dissecting in today's video. So today I'll be comparing their 1080p, 1440p gaming performance, FPS upscaling algorithms, content creation abilities, stream loop performance, and a lot more to see which of these graphics cards is the one you should choose for a brand new graphics card for $300. If you wanna see more videos like this, then do let me know in the comments section below. I'll be reading uh, viewer feedback, and then also give this video a like because that'd be super duper duper appreciated. HP is kicking off their Intel Gamer Day celebration with numerous sales on many Intel powered products like their Omen 45L gaming desktop. Some of my favorite models that are on sale would have to be their Intel Core i7 12700K and RTX 3080 gaming PC for $800 off and their Intel Core i7 12700K and RTX 3060 gaming PC for $350 off. And that is all before an additional 10% off you can get through using the discount code 10GAMER2022. So if you want to take advantage of any of these deals from HP, then be sure to check the link at the top of the description. And once again, thank you to Intel and HP for sponsoring this video. Before we get into the benchmarks, if you'd like to check out any of the graphics cards I've mentioned in this video, then I'll have them all linked in the description for you to check out. So let's begin with some regular 1080p and 1440p benchmarks with Apex Legends at the high preset with the texture memory amount set to 4 gigabytes of VRAM. And here, the 6600 and 6600 XT are very much the preferred options at both resolutions, very much so at 1080p where the 6600 XT has almost a 50 frame per second FPS lead over the 3050 despite costing the same price, at least here in the States. And it's a similar story at 1440p being again about 40 frames per second between the two cards costing the same price. And even between the 6600 and 3050, there's still a pretty decent margin. Then moving on to Forza Horizon 5 at extreme settings between all three of these cards, the 6600 XT is again the fastest card out of the bunch and the 6600 follows it not too far behind. Though in this case at 1080p, the 3050 is very much behind between both of these cards with its average frame rate actually being below the 1% frame rate of the 6600 at 1080p. And the same scenario plays out at 1440p. Looking at Red Dead Redemption 2 at the Faber quality preset with the Vulcan API the game comes in, the 6600 XT actually pulls well ahead of both of these cards, including the 6600 at both resolutions. It very much has a lead at 1440p by about 10 frames per second over the 6600, and at 1080p that's about 12. Though the 3050 is again lacking behind at both resolutions despite being in the same price range as these two other cards. And let's wrap up this section of benchmarks with Valorant just at 1080p, which is going to be a CPU limited game rather than a graphically limited game because Valorant is very easy to run. So at 1080p at the highest settings possible, the 6600 XT is able to go above 400 frames per second. The 6600 is about 3500 frames per second or 350 and the 3050 is not enough to cross that 300 mark. But now let's factor in DLSS because that is one of the main selling points of RTX cards is that they can take advantage of DLSS, which is Nvidia's way of increasing the frames per second in your game while maintaining the same graphical fidelity and vice versa, increasing the graphical fidelity but keeping the frame rate the same through using the tensor cores found on all R RTX cards 
through some AI upscaling algorithms. So that is on full display here on Fortnite because without DLSS, the 3050 is very much getting squashed by the 6600 and 6600 XT. I guess not by as much as some of the other benchmarks because Fortnite is very much optimized for Nvidia cards. But as you can see with DLSS on, you're, good. you're definitely gonna wanna have that on because it is much faster than the 6600 XT, especially at 1440p. That's a pretty big jump. Now, what if we run into a game that not only supports DLSS, but also FSR. And if you don't know, AMD FSR is Radeon's way of upscaling the frame rates of your games while keeping the same graphical fidelity and vice versa, just like DLSS, but it doesn't need to use any tensor cores found on say one of the RTX cards that uses AI to upscale your frame rate or graphical fidelity. Here, it's just a regular algorithm that doesn't use AI, which means it can also be used on not just Radeon cards, but also on NVIDIA cards and even some older generations that don't have tensor cores or something like that, like a GTX 1060. So one of those games is God of War. And for this benchmark, I went ahead and set the DLSS and FSR presets to balanced, which should be about the same in terms of graphical fidelity. But again, put the graphics settings to ultra. And here on God of War, it's a similar trend to the non DLSS and FSR benchmarks we just saw. The 6600 and 6600 XT definitely pull ahead over the 3050 through using FSR at the same preset as what DLSS would match. Now, what I also did is that I went ahead and recorded God of War on both the 3050 and 6600 XT with FSR and DLSS turned on on the respective cards. And I have both footages of these cards side by side. So if you see any visual differences with these similar graphics presets, then let me know in the comments section. Now let's move on to another game that both supports DLSS and FSR, but on top of that also supports ray tracing. So maybe the 3050 can claw back a little bit of room since it technically is better optimized for ray tracing from an architectural standpoint, that being on Deathloop. So here with DLSS set to balanced and FSR set to balance for the Radeon cards at the ultra settings preset with ray tracing turned on, the 3050 is still the slower card at 1080p, but at 1440p, it's actually getting a little close to the 6600, but it's still slower nonetheless. And once again, just like in God of War, I went ahead and recorded similar POVs of each of these graphics cards with DLSS and FSR turned on to compare how they both handle the gameplay footage visually. And again, if you can see any visual differences from what you see on screen between both of these cards, then let me know in the comment section below. So with all of those gaming benchmarks wrapped up, let's go ahead and move on to streaming because that is something important gamers are looking forward to, not just from a professional standpoint, but also from a casual standpoint. And once again, one of the main selling points of all RTX cards is the ability to take advantage of the NVEC encoder, which you can use in OBS, XSplit, whatever you want. So what I did for this test is I went ahead and ran Grand Theft Auto 5 through OBS on the 6600 XT and 3050, and I tried to match the same streaming settings. So for the Nvidia card, I had the NVEC quality preset with a bit rate of 6,500 kilobits per second, 1080p 60 frames per second, a high baseline, and two B frames. And on the Radeon card, I had to set it to the AVC encoder, which is Radeon's built-in hardware encoder, with the Twitch preset at quality settings, same bit rate, same resolution and frame rate, and same two B frames. So, so far as you've seen on screen, if you haven't been able to tell a difference, then that could tell a lot. Otherwise, here are the two cards finally revealed. On the left is the RTX 3050, and on the right is the RX 6600 XT. And from what I was able to tell, there is a little bit of artifacting on the 6600 XT when there's a lot of movement. You'll see some blockage that can disrupt the viewing experience if you really look into it. Otherwise, if you're looking at a still image between both of these cards with no movement, then I really can't tell that much of a difference unless some of you guys are really wanted to point out the minute differences in the comments section below. So in this instance, you gotta make the choice if you want a graphics card with slightly better streaming performance, but is a lot slower when it comes to all around gaming performance, or a card that is slightly worse when it comes to streaming performance, but is very much the faster card all around for regular gaming performance. Which then leads us to our next section, which talks about content creation. So I actually went ahead and ran some benchmarks now 
for this section of the video, starting with the Blackmagic RAW speed test. And to summarize this, this is basically a test of how well your CPU and graphics can handle and decode full resolution Blackmagic RAW footage on your PC. And in this instance, the higher the frame rate, the easier it'll be to hypothetically work with this footage, say if you were in DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I wanna stress this, if you are just working with footage from your stream or like from a gameplay recording that's in a .mp4 or .mkv file, then completely ignore what I'm about to say because those file formats for regular gameplay footage will not tax these cards hard at all. This is for my videographers who are working with some of the most difficult footage on earth to edit and work with. So on the Blackmagic raw speed test between these cards, the 3050 with its CUDA cores is the preferred option. It's very much faster than the 6600 and 6600 XT, which have almost no difference virtually. So from a content creator's perspective, if you're working in DaVinci or Premiere Pro, and you're working with compressed B-RAW, S-Log3, Canon Log, whatever, compressed 4K or higher resolution footage that's going to be difficult for your NLE to handle, then the 350 for the same price is looking pretty good. But as a comparison, just to see if it's that much faster than the Radeon cards, I also had went ahead and threw my own RTX 3080 Ti into the mix. And here, with that same benchmark, the 3080 Ti is actually not that much faster than the 3050, despite costing almost four times the price. So from a video editing perspective, just the fact that there's CUDA cores on this 3050 is very much gonna benefit you for working in any high quality, footage environments on your PC. But what will really tax your computer is 3D modeling. And that's the next segment of this video. So I went ahead and ran the Blender benchmark, which tests either your CPU or GPU for regular 3D modeling applications. And across all three of these cards with the CUDA cores on the 3050, it's to be expected, it is a better card for rendering. Now to what degree is it better than the other cards for rendering, I went ahead and determined that through also benchmarking my 3080 Ti on that same Blender benchmark. And here, it has an enormous lead over the 3050. And I think that's mostly attributed just to how many CUDA cores that 3080 Ti has. But TLDR, the Radeon cards aren't the best for intense video editing and 3D modeling. And all of this leads us to the last section of this video, which talks just on some final points with all of these cards. First up with the wattage consumption in regular gaming. And I really wanted to put this out there because the 6600 XT runs at about the same wattage as the 3050 from my tests through running it on Red Dead Redemption 2, yet it's getting more frames per second in gaming. So despite consuming the same wattage, the 6600 XT is just more efficient in providing better performance and the 6600 is undercutting both when it comes to the wattage consumed with the frames you're getting. And finally, if you were hesitant on maybe picking up a Radeon card because of the supposed driver issues and such, it has been over a year since these cards released and it's been over three years since the RDNA architecture was first unveiled. So by now, all driver issues and any of that should be well ironed out. And to be frank, if you do come across any possible problems with not just radio cards, but with any cards on whatever game you play, and if it's an all of a sudden like just drop in performance or glitchiness, that may go down to the game rather than the card itself. I would only really blame the card for its driver instability issues if you're experiencing issues across all of your games if you're just experiencing it on one game in particular, then it's probably on the game and not so much on the graphics card. In fact, if you want a good example of very bad graphics card drivers, then I really recommend you take a look at the Intel Arc series of GPUs that are completely brand new, Intel's first dedicated desktop graphics cards, and they definitely have those. So in conclusion, for $300 for gaming, completely pass up the 3050. If you're looking suddenly for a little bit more all around that maybe takes in a little bit of streaming and say taking those streams and editing it on Premiere, DaVinci, Vegas, Final Cut, whatever you use, probably not Final Cut because this isn't on a Mac, then I still think the Radeon is the better card because it straight up outperforms the 3050 by a whole margin. But now if you're someone who is very much interweaved 
with the world of high-end video and 3D modeling production, then for the same price, the 3050 actually makes a little bit of sense. But as you saw versus my 3080 Ti, just getting a straight up faster card with more CUDA cores and VRAM is going to benefit you more, at least for 3D modeling, than getting NVIDIA's weakest RTX card. I would just spend the extra and get something way more because that'll be a better use of your time and money. Otherwise, it's a slam dunk for Team Red with the RX 6000 series. And I'm not gonna get too much into the used market because that kind of veers off the point of this video because then you'll be like, oh, but what about a 2070 Super? Because that costs the same as a 3050 on the used market. And that is a much better value than this card all around. But then I throw into that the fact that there's also the 5700 XT that could undercut that by almost a whole hundred dollars, especially after September 15th when Ethereum moves from proof of work to proof of stake. And we're going to get a whole flood of mining graphics cards for super cheap and from a value and performance perspective, just for gaming and all around stuff, that 5700 XT for way less than a 2070 Super could be an even better instant buy. So. I'm not gonna get into the world of used graphics cards for this video, if you're wondering why I haven't really talked about that yet, but from a new perspective, for my US viewers, 6600 XT, for my international viewers, 6600. Whew. And with all of that, that is it for today's video. And thank you all who have made it to this point in the video. It's a very small percentage of you, so. <laughs> Thank you for making it to the end and for willing to listen to all the work and research that I've done to put this video together. And if you haven't yet, you might want to like it because you probably like what I've made so far. So that'd be nice. And if you want to stay on board with the Skyfall channel, then this would be the time to subscribe because hopefully my content continues on a quality trajectory like this. We'll see. But yeah, that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Skyfall channel signing out.